testing, making sure that this mic works. It is in a different spot, so let me know if you can hear me or not. I just saw on my stream lab as I'm checking. Thank you, Haas. 00312 was here, has followed me. Thank you so much. We are gonna do some face painting today, so whether or not you wanna stick around, up to you. And good to hear and see Rebel Star, <laughs> that you can hear me. That's great, uh, I'm glad. In that case, um, I'm going to switch over my camera and we will get started tonight. I do have to open Twitch up on my phone to read comments today because my laptop has to be positioned behind me a certain way in order to do this new camera setup. So let's get this switched over. Looks pretty good. Thank you Curry with Rice for helping me set this up beforehand. It was a little bit difficult because the tripod is being a butt, but it looks good now and so we are happy. And let me see if I can figure out this comments now. Okay, I think I see it. It was mostly like, oops, pause my headphones. <laughs> or maybe I skipped the song, I don't know. All right, if someone could say something in the comments, that way I can check to make sure that my Twitch on my phone is working. Let's see. It's a bit quiet. Uh, okay, well, I'm gonna be going in. Wait, what's quiet? The audio or me? I'm gonna be facing the mic shortly, so really I'm just turned around. Okay, uh, I don't know what I can do about that. <laughs> Um, let's see. Hope you had a good time at the concert yesterday. Concert? Oh, no, we went uh, and saw Shang-Chi. That was fantastic, though. Um, that was really great. I highly recommend you guys see Shang-Chi. Um, Legend of the Ten Rings, I think it is. Super fantastic in many ways. Genre-breaking really great um, portrayal of Asian American history and culture and people um, and just a really fun ride, a great superhero origin. Really excited to see what will happen and Tony Wong is crazy. He is so good. I could not believe how good he was. <laughs> yeah, no worries, Rebel Star. I don't expect anybody to keep track of what I'm doing, <laughs> so, but I appreciate the sentiment. All right, uh, so I, I'm facing my mic now, so this is as loud as it's gonna get. I'm gonna test and make sure yeah, my head is not coming into this view, so we're good. I am just gonna leave my um, phone on the left here in my airbrush booth so you guys can see me. So here's my hands. So today uh, we are finally at the point where we are able to start face painting. No, that's the most important part for a lot of people. Um, so far, things have been good. Um, as you can see, I took the masking off of masking tape off of her hair, and it came out great. Like it really came out great, and so I'm very happy. There's not too much cleanup we have to do. There's a little bit, but it's mostly in like her hairline. So I don't know if you guys can see. But on the, the right here, I kind of already started cleaning it up and the left still has a little bit of cleanup left to do. Cleanup meaning that when, after we airbrushed, um, there is still a little bit of, of paint that didn't hit certain areas and so all we saw is skin tone. Um, when you airbrush and mask, obviously you want to cover as much as you can, but sometimes you need to clean up little details and, and things that get missed or masked over, etc. So you can see it's kind of messy like near her ear here, kind of under here. Sorry, I keep having to turn over because I'm wanting to see what my stream looks like. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of over here it's messy, over here a little bit. And so first thing we're gonna do tonight is clean up the hairline. So that's kind of my priority here is getting the hairline cleaned up. Then after that, we are going to paint her mouth because that is pretty straightforward. It's just, you know, a little bit of pink. And then we're gonna put some whites in her eyes as we prepare and, and move forward in the eye painting steps. So, um, as we showed in the maid kit before, 
uh, face painting, at least my version of face painting undergoes multiple steps. So generally, you know, you, I use enamel paint. So we'll be working with enamel tonight. These are, um, let's see, Gaia Notes and Tamiya brands respectively. So both of these uh, brands of paint are both, they do make lacquer lines and they make enamel lines. So this is the enamel version. Um, as we also discussed for the made kit, uh, enamels are kind of intermediate. So there's water-based acrylics, enamels, lacquers, all of them are in different solvent, etc. But this one, enamel is kind of a special case since it thins in oils, special ena enamel oils, um, and it's enamel paint. So it's different from lacquer. Um, it, it's different from water-based. It's kind of its own thing. And so what um, I did before and what my typical procedure is for my maid kits, or <laughs> not my maid kits, any kit really, um, is to paint all of the main details and the main uh, colors in lacquer paint and top coat them with gloss. So you can see that she's really shiny here and glossy. Uh, that's a result of the gloss top coat that we put on that I pre-mix. So this is just a pre-mix top coat that I put on here. And her face and hair and everything has been sprayed with that. Then what we're gonna do is go in and paint, you know, some of the details with enamel paint. Let that completely cure out. And then we'll top coat it again with lacquer top coat. So it will go, you know, lacquer top coat enamel painting of certain you know things and then another layer of lacquer top coat then after that you can paint your second layer of enamel on top of that lacquer top coat and you will not rub off the enamel that is underneath that previous layer if that makes sense so the the whole process of painting details with enamel is using thin layers of lacquer top coat so you won't erase the enamel details with your enamel thinner. So right now we're kind of starting at the base number one layer. Um, this would be considered like layer one. Uh, you generally don't want to, you know, put on too many layers because then it starts getting the color. Some of the colors start getting a little wacky, and um, you also, if you put on too thick of a layer, you risk your enamel paint kind of, I guess, thinning out. Like it will definitely thin out because enamel is weaker than lacquer. So. Um, there, there's a couple tricks to using this paint method, mainly, you know, making sure that you don't spray your top coats on too thick um, and that you have a good top coat on though, because otherwise you're just going to be eating into your other layers. So um, I think that pretty much covers, you know, the, the basics of this method, but as you guys will see, I'll be working with it. And so um, I already did start out a little bit already, as I said, uh, working on this face and just kind of making sure that my color, my mixed color was okay. Um, I ended up using a combination of, let's see, some Tamiya enamel red, some uh, Gaia Nuts enamel black, and then a kind of new one that I bought recently, uh, Tamiya XF64. This is uh, red brown. So these are the three paints that I put together to mix the hair color. That is pretty much approximately uh, what you know I airbrushed on. Really, when it comes to enamel painting, you want to get as close of a match as possible. Otherwise, it's not going to look like the details are cleaned up. So um, as you can see, it's dried out here. So what I will have to do is reactivate a little bit. Um, luckily, similar to lacquer paint, you can reactivate enamel paint with some enamel thinner. So I'm just going to reactivate it and then we can get started painting the details and, and get going. So let me get out some brushes. Uh, I think these are good. There was one more. In, oh, there it is. So I typically stick to my favorite brushes. Um, they are all pretty beat up. One of them I use here. Uh, it was literally just one that I used to mix paint and reactivate paint. So you can see the, the bristles are all splayed and it's not in good shape. Um, lately, I've been really big on painting my faces with a round 3.0 brush. So this is kind of my typical brush that I uh, apply paint with and clean up larger details with. Then I am also lately using my Tamiya Modeling Brush 2. Very uh, thin here, as you can see. Um, this is model or item number 87172. So I think this is one of the smallest ones that they make. But I use this for most of my 
minor cleanup details. So really when I'm wanting to sharpen uh, eyelashes, clean up really small lines, kind of like in between her hairline here, uh, that's, this is what I'll use that brush for. Additionally, I use a Gaia Notes um, little sponge. I forgot off the top of my head what it's called, but it's really just like a little sponge that wipes away a lot of enamel paint. So this is really useful for cleaning up areas because sometimes the brush doesn't take everything off. And so really you can just kind of like wipe the face off and it will um, take off all the enamel paint. So those are the, I guess, equipment that I will be using today. Um, along with some enamel thinner, which I have here. I don't think I'll put it up here because um, I don't want the camera to focus on it, but it is sitting up there. I usually put uh, one clean one here and one kind of dirty one here, and so they go under a two-step process. And then I also put some in a little cup here, a metal cup, because that way um, I don't have to extend my paintbrush all the way down into that little measuring cup. It's a lot easier for me just to quickly brush it off and um, clean up the paint that way. So uh, let's get going. I'm going to reactivate some of this. I'm just literally putting enamel thinner back into this metal pan. And as you can see, it's already starting to reactivate. I might put this aside once um, I start painting because I don't want it to focus on the metal part so uh, really in terms of like thinning it it just you kind of eyeball it <laughs> milky consistency is what I aim for but really I, I just eyeball it and um, like this is probably good let me see if I can make this nope that's about as uh, zoomed in as it's gonna get so unfortunately I won't be able to zoom in super super close um, we can work on that next stream but Again, tripod is giving us some issues. So I do want to at least make sure it's just standing straight. So, okay. So then really what I will do and what I generally do is just go in and kind of apply the paint roughly. So there are a couple of areas, mostly along her hairline that I want to make sure are cleaned up. And so it may look kind of messy now, but once we clean up the details, it will look much better. And that's the whole point of the enamel paint method is that you have the ability to wipe up the paint very easily because you're working with a different type of paint. Where, you know, meaning we're working with enamel paint now, not lacquer paint. So, so yeah, just really kind of roughly putting on the enamel paint in between her hairline. So that's the big thing that's going to need to be cleaned up here. I will also be pulling the figure kind of towards me so I can look at it and make sure that I'm getting these areas filled in. We're gonna go all the way around her whole hairline doing this. Again, we did a pretty dang good job of masking, but there's just a couple areas where like skin shows through or um, maybe I didn't, you know, apply the tape too correctly, so. especially like right here where I'm just applying the paint and all that will be cleaned up. I did thin this out a little bit too much I think but that's fine. I also do find that um, Tamiya enamel paints tend to thin out a little bit easier than the Guy Notes ones so this is the first time I've used the red brown, so that should be interesting. See, it's a little sticky getting on my finger. Okay. Also, the good thing about this method is 
you can apply you know these thin coats pretty quickly and then work almost start working with it immediately it just needs a little bit of time to dry but that's pretty much it Okay, so we went around, went around her whole head, a little more here. That should be good. Just really making sure it's a smooth curve all around. So I find there's a little bit more forgiveness uh, as long as you intentionally are making things smoothed out. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense at all. All right, I think that's good. We'll start cleaning up very shortly. I'm just gonna wash my brush out. Again, this is kind of a, this is one of my used brushes, so I don't really mind abusing it too much. Okay. Leave that here. And at the same time, um, I have a couple of like palettes, I guess I would say that I've used in the past and I liked these too so um, I will be using this for her face or her little mouth until otherwise like if it doesn't look good I'll just wipe it out but um, I am curious to see if this color will work for her so let's do that as well while we're waiting for that um, hair to dry I'm gonna do the exact same thing just kind of take some thinner Put it into the cup. This enamel paint here um, was used quite a bit ago, so it will take a little bit longer to reactivate. Hopefully my Momo is picking up. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. So we're getting there. You can see once the bubbles start forming, it's really starting to get thinned out so and then generally I kind of like rub it against um, the edge of the lid to capture all that paint let's see if this works I'm not sure if this is the same skin tone ish um, as the last kit so I'm not sure if it will work or not but let's give it a try Let me fill it in first and then I'll uh, show you guys. It's a little bit not quite as vibrant as I thought, but actually I think it will work. We'll see. Oops, it's like a weird hair or something. I'm gonna try that for now and we'll see how that goes. Um, I do have a secondary color over here that will basically be like the inner edges of her hair or her uh, mouth. So like this is the main color of her tongue and this will be like the mouth, like insides of her mouth, her gums and stuff. So. Uh, let's see a comment. Can you keep letting it dry and reactivating it indefinitely as far as I'm aware for um, Enamel yeah, I think you can like I've had this for a couple weeks now just sitting here It's dried up. There hasn't been any issue with reactivating it um, This one is really old. I don't even remember what kit this was But it's just such a like nice brown that I just keep it around the problem with this is that it once you do this it occupies a space right and so like essentially I can't use this paint pot again until you know this is emptied so it has its pros it has its cons um, I don't generally keep a lot of these you know around just because it doesn't make sense like I can just mix the color again um, but for these two I did like the color so I decided why not and this like at the time when I was painting this kit was coming up so I figured <laughs> might as well see if it works yeah yeah it's super cool um super useful one of the reasons why i like enamel to be honest um but yeah storage is definitely an issue so 
uh, just keep that in mind. So here's kind of where we're at. You can see she has some pink in her mouth now. I'm trying to get this. Yeah, so she has pink in her mouth. <laughs> it's a little too close focus on my finger instead. But all of that needs to be cleaned up anyway, so. And we'll see if I like the pink. I do find that when um, these paints dry, they can sometimes dry a little bit darker, so that might be the case here too. Okay, so we're pretty much just gonna start cleaning up the face, um, or meaning the hairline, and then eventually the little mouth before we move on to the whites of her eyes. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it, so. What I will be using for this, let's see, make sure when I lean over, I, my head doesn't get in the camera. Yeah, we're good. So I get really close when I'm doing this, so yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay. Mostly because this is such like precision work that I do want to make sure that I'm seeing everything. So really what we're going to do is just take a, a little bit of enamel thinner and then erase the paint we just put on in the places where we don't want it. So certain spots of the hairline. Um, let me move this over here actually. In this case we're going to remove all of the um, enamel paint that we put on that is like on her skin but is not on the hairline. So we want that hairline to look as clean as possible and enamel can help us do that. Oh god, not this one. Oh. Gotta lean all the way around. There we go. Okay, there we go. Like getting nice and comfy. I've got my comfy pants on, so. So yeah, this is often, I think, I would say this is one of my favorite spot, um, parts of the painting process the enamel steps just because but at this point like you've done all of your base coats you have a good idea of what the um, kit is gonna look like but it just needs something a little bit extra it needs to look a little cleaner it needs to have more detail a lot of time the face just looks kind of spooky until you start getting the face painted so it doesn't really feel like anything but once you start painting the details and the figure starts to come to life so it's kind of my favorite part of this so generally I'll do kind of like a first pass and then I'll go over it again, and, and meaning I'll look at it real close and see if I missed anywhere, if there's anything else I need to erase, add on, etc. So we'll be doing this for a little, quite a bit tonight, especially because our hairline is so long. Sometimes you just erase too much and then you gotta go in again this but generally your paint is still reactivated at that point so and that's pretty much it that's the enamel method so not quite as scary as it seems there's actually quite a bit of forgiveness with this I think the main thing that people struggle with is just the ratios and also the color mixing so Unlike, um, you know, acrylic paints where you have a ton of color options, enamel you really don't have quite as many. Um, Tamiya makes quite a, a bit, so that is helping a lot. Um, but in terms of Gaia Notes enamels, you really only have the CMY, so um, cyan, maroon, yellow, black, white, and then some fluorescence, and that's pretty much their whole line of colors. So. The Gaia Notes paints at least really require you to be familiar with knowing how to mix paint and what colors you want to, to get um, using, you know, CMY colors. Whereas the Tamiya paints, um, they're a little more forgiving. They have a bunch of opaque colors. They actually have clear colors so you can, you know, just buy clear blue enamel out of a bottle and then Tamiya has that for you. 
Um, they also do mit some metallics. So they have, you know, silver and gold. So they are a little bit more beginner friendly, I would say, compared to the Gaia Notes enamels. But I do find that Gaia Notes enamels, like I said, um, go on and erase a little bit easier. I feel like when I'm working with Kamiya enamels, um, I end up having to wipe away a lot more. Not really a bad thing, just part of the, the paint. So yeah, really what I'm doing right now is just slowly working my way around the hairline in between every single zigzag because as you guys saw during the masking phase she had a lot of these little zigzag hairs in her hairline which is really fun i don't really see that a lot in kits so it's nice to have this sculpted head with some you know really strong hairline and she looks like she has not a lot of hair right now but that's because it's all flying in the wind and her bangs aren't on and she doesn't have her little hair tendrils, so. Let's see, at least you don't have to store hundreds of bottles of paints. Yeah, definitely Rebel Star. I am really kind of a minimalist, to be honest, when it comes to paint storage and, and paints. Um, I don't really hoard that many paints. I don't really see the point too much because most of the time you can mix any color. Um, there are, however, certain bottle colors that are much easier to just buy pre-made and they come out a lot more vibrant and better um, more, like compared to if you mixed it yourself. So I also tend to like throw in random ones every time. So I, I buy a lot of purples and greens um, just because those are colors that can be a little tricky to mix, purple especially. Um, so I've got quite a few varieties of purple at this point. I actually also picked up another different purple that I ordered recently just because you never know when you need that type of purple. <laughs> it's like a really pretty metallic purple. Um, and I thought, you know what, why not? I had room in my order. So I don't hoard a ton, but I still like to, you know, make buys every now and then. Yep, exactly. Purple's always a good one. I am also unfortunately not rich enough to be able to buy like multiple of the same color over and over and over. So um, I don't paint a lot of the same character. So I need a lot of uh, paint variety. That's another thing as well. So I'm not just only painting sabers or um, certain characters. If you're only painting one, like I guess you could probably go a little more ham with like finding the right shade of red for example or the right shade of blue um, but i don't think i've really ever painted a duplicate character maybe i have at this point i definitely have kits that are you know duplicate characters but i don't know if i've painted two of the same one yet but that also goes back to uh, recording your paint mixtures and making sure that you have it all written down because if you do have to paint the same character again or if you have to paint two you have that on hand so okay we're getting there this is just a slow deliberate process this is um kind of the relaxing part of kit painting i think you can see i wipe off most like I start and wipe off the sharp details with my little brush and then I go in with my guy notes kind of sponge and clean up any excess. Also, especially for this figure, I want to be looking at it from different angles because enamel paint will kind of pile up and it's easy to just obscure the details.
So yeah, this does come up sometimes, but there are also um, little assemblies or it's literally a little ring made out of wood typically that you can stick your face on and hold the kit that way. That way you're not touching it like I am here at the top. Um, some people use them, others don't, but it's just a tool that's available for people who paint faces. It was literally called like painting jig or something and I'm pretty sure I talked about it last time in my made kit series so maybe if you're interested check out the face painting for the made kit although that spanned kind of a long time too so <laughs> that kit series really went on quite a bit I feel like we sped up a lot for this um, series here But the exciting thing about that is that there's really not too much cleanup on this kit. I don't really think there's much at all left besides painting this face and adding the gold details for the, you know, Chun Li's outfit. So that I have not fully decided on the gold color that I'm going to be using, uh, nor the method of how I'm going to apply it. Meaning, do I want to airbrush it? Do I want to hand paint it on? I'm not really sure yet. I'm still deciding, so we got some time. See, this is really kind of fine work here. This face is not that big, all things considered. Um, when we put, let's see if there's something for scale. Here's the head of a, a small spoon, and here's her head. So, um, this is like considered a small spoon. So, also, I guess, a toothpick for scale. So, this is a typical toothpick, and this is her head. So, a little bit smaller head than whoops, any, you know. 1 6 kit or anything like that and the sculpted hair makes it a little more complicated but no worries I feel like overall the made kit was uh, a little more challenging when it came to fixing all the other issues and stuff so this one had a couple problems but for the most part the painting um, was really straightforward and the parts breakdown is pretty good other than this head but I do really like the color that this hair turned out um, after this hair or this painting session I'll have to try to grab the um, pieces and show you guys because they sealed really nicely Kind of skipping over her ear for now. I think I'm gonna come back to that after. But for now, I want to get the excess enamel off of the nape of her neck here. This area was obviously a little bit difficult to mask because it's um, a little more complicated. You got her ear here. It curves down pretty sharply, and so a uh, resulting of that we didn't get a full masking job. Okay, a little tough. Okay, I also have some really precision uh, cotton swabs which I use sometimes, but lately I just opt for the uh, good old paintbrush and the little sponge method. So if you're not careful, that sharp um, Q-tip will take off stuff, especially with the uh, eyes. Hello, 
Hello, Penila. Or, yeah, I think I said it right. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? Penny. We are working on uh, cleanup right now, so not too much cleanup needed for this kit, but we are fixing up the hair. So. Let's see. Thought of an interesting idea to do for your garage kits at left. Making little gun possibly. Oh, that's a cute idea. Very cute idea. That's a surprise. We do love spoons around here and in this hobby, so. I'm glad you are doing well, too. out some of it first and then we'll come back to behind the ear later and really at this point like this type of detail here people are not really gonna see it so it's mostly just for my own self-satisfaction to make sure that everything looks clean. This is a challenging part right here though. Kind of, there's a, like a triangle. She has a very interesting hair. They hold back. I guess they can't really sculpt individual hairs, and so it's mostly just like a sharp angle. So when you lift your hair up, you know, you get more hair on the back of your neck and then kind of on the sides it pulls up. But it just looks like she's like mostly bald here, so it's pretty funny. And hopefully it's focusing and you guys are able to see this moderately well. Again, I think next time I'll try to lower it a little bit, but there's only so much lowering I can do. I don't have a macro lens, so we can't get that crazy up close detail yet. We've been trying, trying to make improvements to this, these streams. This is already better than what I had before, so. Okay, finally kind of able to start working towards right behind her neck. Just kind of applied a lot of enamel, so. Okay, that's looking good. She's got kind of a little bit of dusties on her face. Let me see if I have a sponge on hand. So 
I'm just gonna kind of, there you go, brush them off. Just a little dust. Okay, and there's still a little bit of area here on her neck that I want to look a little bit straighter. So I'm not totally happy with how the line looks. Area, I think was the roughest of the masking. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so we're ready to move on. Let's see. Oh, got my hair poking out. Okay. Well, I'll pull my tiny hair back. Thank you. Is it the top of my head or like hair at the side of my head? I'll just try not to focus in. Okay, but I'm also doing kind of rubbing the top of her head here because there was enamel that got stuck on the, the top. But we already painted her hair, so don't need that extra. Yeah, I also like enamel because you can just kind of spot treat areas. So if you notice, you know, tiny piece of paint scratched or you're missing a little bit, you can just go in with enamel and clean it up. Okay. I'm gonna continue working along the back of her neck now and then kind of go into the other side. type of work is patience and precision. You just really gotta know where you're aiming your paintbrush and it does take a little while to clean up these lines. Of course there's also a lot more forgiveness with this method so you know, if you're working with acrylic, you'll have to blend in your paints a little more, etc. But for this one, part of why I like this method is I can just sit here and wipe at paint for hours. And eventually it gets to a point where I like it, how the paint job came out. So. I'm gonna have to find a new playlist soon because some of these I've like heard multiple times at this point. I'm getting a little tired of them. And it claims it's DMCA free. It does not mean that apparently that it's copyright free. So 
<laughs> at least on YouTube and sometimes Twitch too. I'm still having to deal with the being silenced thing, so a little unfor excuse me, a little unfortunate. Okay. Clean that up. Just kind of uh, showing off where we're at right here. Wow, well, there we go. Just really working on smoothing out this line, um, curving everything, making sure that stuff looks good. And then now we're working on the back of the neck. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's still pretty rough to be honest, but we're getting there. I know when I'm like there and this is not it yet. And again, this does look like kind of boring right now, but it's also because we don't have any of the, you know, other pieces on there. She's got no face. It's just not great. Okay, there's a bit of paint here. Okay, I think that was an issue from airbrushing, so I need to just clean that up then. Smooth it out. Oops. to grab some more precision q-tips but they're sitting over here so there we go that actually was not quite as painful as i thought <laughs> okay so i've been kind of using a, a bent q-tip i don't even know how old that was but this is a new one so So we're working on the back of her neck now, in case <laughs> any of you are dozing off. And then we're gonna move kind of to the other side of the nape of her neck.
this and I'll do this one more. And then do a little more over here. So now we're going to kind of change over here to the other side of our neck. Just working slowly. Actually, this side is a lot cleaner than the other one. I think it's just because the masking was a little bit easier for whatever reason, so. Yeah, like that's already fine. But I will clean this up a little. behind her ear in that little triangle. camera? No. You just fussing? I'm just walking around my uh, chair right now. What's up, boo? You want to come here? Oh, don't hit the mic. What? Temporary, uh, Distraction, you guys. One second. Mark, it's like rubbing against the mic. I'm afraid he's gonna pull it down. He's a big boy, so. Come here, boo. Oh no, he's gonna chew his little fake fish. All right. Well, if he comes over here, I'll lift him up and put his paws on camera. It'll be fun to check the VOD and see if you guys can hear his meows. He's been pretty vocal over uh, the course of COVID pandemic. This tiny paintbrush hit the hilt of it against her ear. There we go. This has been okay. Yes, cats and paint. Very cute combo. Um, not great if you have cat hair. So <laughs> that's the, the only problem. And, or cats that like to jump up and knock your stuff over. That's also not very fun. Rocket is not the type of cat to do that. Thankfully, he is a very respectful cat, and usually there's not like much area up here for him to jump up to anyway. He can, and he knows he can, but he does not out of respect or whatever. But what, every now and then, like 
I have caught him just standing on my workbench and I don't know why. Usually it's like probably if he heard something in the wall or you know there's something moving and then you just you know make sure you don't have anything on your uh, <laughs> workbench. He doesn't purposely knock stuff off but he, he has done it accidentally. One time it even happened to a figure that I had fully built and was disassembled but ready for assembling and just knocked off a hair piece which fell into the literal trash and broke and you know at that point it, like the top coat was on the, the piece was done and so that was a stressful one i like was not happy at rocket or myself for um, putting the piece that close to the edge. Thankfully, it was like a repair that I was able to make and it wasn't um, Kit breaking or anything like that. That's the thing about kits is there's not really it, At all many cases where it would be totally irreparable damage But it's still like you put all that time into stuff and then things happen. It's so annoying Let's see the other week your cat switched her tail through your wet palette and they're around the house <laughs> Okay, that's pretty cute in like a, oh no, but also a pretty cute way. Cause I can see cats doing that. And then to have that tail being all multicolored is pretty sweet. Except then your paint is gone and you got a palette with a bunch of cat hair on it. <laughs> Not great. Artist scenarios. All right, I am going to take a not precision cotton swab, but kind of a less precision one, and just kind of rub it along the hair real quick to take off any extra enamel that is not supposed to be along the hairline. I can already feel it taking some of it off. <laughs> yeah, that's super cute. I would probably be laughing too, because it's not like, you know, it's just a funny situation and it's cute because your cat has paint on her tail. Okay, let's do that. I'm gonna use a couple of these. So these are helpful at wiping off big areas. You can see that a little bit comes off, but it's enough that, you know, it's taking paint off. Oops. Again, kind of totally optional, but I do this because um, I really want that enamel paint as close to on the area as possible and not really anywhere else. So what I'm wiping off now is enamel paint that is on top of this brown lacquer, but I don't need that there because I already have this brown lacquer here. And so. Really, the only places that this enamel should be at is in the crevices and areas that it's supposed to fill in. Okay. Some more here. And this is actually a, a darker color. The enamel is a darker color than the hair color that I sprayed and so what I'm seeing here um, is a, a nice contrast between the chocolate browns. Sorry I'm doing this and trying to talk as well. I'm not very good at multitasking as you may or may not have noticed over the course of all of these streams. Especially when it concerns details I can get pretty focused. But anyway, what I'm saying is that, like I said before, the enamel dries a little bit darker than, you know, what I usually mix it at. And so what I'm seeing is that the enamel or the lacquer that I put on is a lighter color than the enamel that I laid down. Which is good. It's giving this hair a little bit more shadowing more dimension, etc. Okay, this I can clean up too now. So this was an area that I kind of 
put more paint down on and then ignored and continued moving on. I believe this portion right here is also where her little hair will sit and so you really shouldn't be seeing any skin tone eventually but I'm still going to clean this up for appearances. Definitely going to do some wiping right here. You can see the darker bit of the nail on there. Going through quite a few of these. See, sponge should take off, you know, a lot of it, but for some of this, I still prefer to use these to rub it off, especially because, like, she's got all these tiny triangles, and so just being able to rub the, the little triangle is enough to take the paint off. Okay. I think we're about good though. These songs that just talk it's like that's one thing that bothers me songs that talk okay so uh first round or pass of this hairline is good um and so what i'm gonna do now as you can see it's starting to look cleaned up or not to me it looks cleaned up you know just kind of um <laughs> depends on how good the camera is but what I'm gonna do now is look at this real close and clean up any other minor things I see before we move on. Generally this won't take as long as the first, you know, looking at it, but once you apply that lacquer top coat layer, you really can't erase your enamel underneath unless you purposely try to like dig away at it. And so I really just want to make sure that it looks exactly how I want and that way we don't have to do anything else. Some of this, there's only so much I can do because also the hair lacquer I put on covered it, so. And these are details I certainly don't think that the camera will pick up, but I'm basically straightening the lines as much as I can with my paintbrush. Okay, I think that's lacquer. I can't do anything. 
Tuta. Okay. I'm not sure what's happening here. This area, I think I just forgot. It's very easy for me also during this step to just like hone in on and keep doing like it over and over and over until I'm happy with it. So I spend a lot of time in the detailing phase compared to like the regular lacquer. lacquer. So once we finish this hairline, which we will finish tonight, now I'm going to briefly move on to her mouth and clear that up, which shouldn't take too long, hopefully. I say that every time. Then after that, I'm going to mix some white paint and just fill in the whites of her eyes, and that should be where we end it tonight. She'll be able to clean, clean up some of the whites, hopefully, but again, I'm not holding my breath. It takes so long on each of these steps. The whites of the eyes are the first thing I usually paint um, when I'm doing the eye painting method. Some people it varies. I've noticed a variety of techniques popping up now where some people just paint the whole outline of the eye first and then they go in and do the um, whites of the eyes and everything after that. And I can see the benefit of doing that because by then you've laid down the placement and it's not, you know, um, it can't be changed. It's like you've penciled on the the eyes at that point. So that seems really helpful. But for this kit, she has sculpted eyes. And so um, you can see she's got let's see, literal eye sockets. And so it really should not be that difficult to just, you know, put a bunch of white inside of the eyes and then let that dry, wipe out, you know, everything that's not in the eye socket. And so... Painting figures with um, sculpted eyes is like one of the best things. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Cause like you, there's no guessing. You don't have to uh, mess around with the proportions, paint it freehand, etc. Not to say that I can't paint it freehand, but it's just so much easier when you have a template and a guide already there for you. And I really liked this kit because she does have an interesting face sculpt. Um, she's not making like the usual cutesy smile, nor is she even frowning. She's just got this like weird, you know, mouth forming a surprise fighting face. And so um, kind of like she's saying something as she's fighting. I think that's really fun. And yeah, her little mouth is just kind of like a, a little oval teardrop shape I should say yeah exactly I think it's an interesting and, and different expression part of the reason this kit um, I was interested in this kit in the first place and this this is an old kit this is a kit that I've been wanting to build and paint for a very long time and so to see her nearing this state of completion is kind of surreal and I'm hoping I'll get a fun sense of satisfaction once she's done because let me see if I can dig up the backstory for this kit it won't take very long I already know what to look up so. Yes, 
So this kit was first sold in, how oh, interesting, it has a number of release dates. That's weird. I wonder if that one's a fake one. Most of the time this kit was sold in 2015 to 2016. So um, definitely over five years old at this point, you know. But this is this kit is actually the first figure, first garage kit I ever added to my figure collection, the website, um, which was like a really weird piece of trivia for me because I've been on that website, or I used to be on that website for many years and I added thousands and thousands of kits to the database. Um, but this was the first one, so in a way she kind of started me adding and figuring out how to add that stuff. So that was really crazy. And for the longest time she was a kid that I really wanted. She wasn't a holy grail, but just one that I've always wanted to paint. And no one is gonna ever ask me to paint this kid <laughs> for a commission. Um, and so eventually I just saw her pop up on Mandarake and at that time, you know, it was the right time. I had the funds, I had the means, and so I bought her. And she sat in my closet for quite a long time. And I pulled her out for this, so. Figured I need a reason to build her. She's one of those kits that I needed a, a inspiration for and a reason for to build. And so both of those happened. And sometimes it's just the right time. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more up here on her hairline. I think this is the area where her little bang pops up, but even so, I'm going to just clean it up a tiny bit. Usually I don't mix paint with this tiny brush because I don't want the bristles to get out of line, but I need so little paint here that it should be okay. Wipe that off. And that, I think, concludes the second pass, so I'm pretty happy with how this cleaned up. Except for this spot. But yeah, I guess my moral of the story for that little blurb I did was that even if you have a bunch of kits in your closet, someday it will be the right time for them. So, you know, I think all, most of us have some sort of stash that we've accumulated. But you will work through it when it's the right time, hopefully. Just need an idea. At least I usually just need an idea for what I want to do. Okay, so I'm gonna mix a little more of this. It's just really not thinning out how I want. Okay. Some kits you just put in your closet because you don't feel like you have enough skill at the moment or maybe it's too much of a project and that's totally fine. Only it wasn't so much easier to buy kits. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier to just click buy than it is to put, you know, the tens of hours into painting and prepping and everything. So, um, you know, <laughs> there's no machine where you can just put a kit in and it will pop out painted. These are artist works. You know, people work pretty hard on them if you commission someone. And if you're buying it from auction, pre-painted, etc., like that's still 
someone took the time and did all of the work. So just keep that in mind that these are totally different from PVC, which do they do have a hand in, you know, people painting them, usually some details, but the vast majority is produced by a machine in a factory. So um, these are entirely different from PVC works. I can't say the same for pre-painted resin garage kits. I'm not really sure. Those are a completely different thing from these types of garage kits. So I don't actually know how they handle them in the factories. I assume a lot of it is handled the same way with uh, maybe some more hand painting and artistry work involved since they do have limited batches that they produce. Okay, let me look at this. I think that my head, what, what was it? oh yeah, <laughs> I'm really leaning in there. <laughs> Sorry, I'll uh, lean back a little bit more. Again, I get really into it. Let me look. Thank you, Curry, for pointing it out. And let's see. Do I have a project lined up for when this one is done? Yes, but it is something a little bit different. It's something that I've never done before, and it is a surprise. So um, it should not take as long as a full garage kit, but it's not a garage kit. So just kind of an FYI and a, a hint there, but it's something I've also really wanted to do for a long time and have not had the chance to do so. And so now that I'm back in school, I need different smooth brain projects to keep me occupied. And so, you know, this will be one of them. But after that, after that project, we'll go back to kits. Um, it's mainly, I just really want to do this project and um, I have not actually figured out what kit I want to paint next. So that'll give me a little bit of time. <laughs> no way. The whole point of this is so you guys can see this. So if my big head's in the way, that's not very helpful. <laughs> okay, let me grab her little hair and so then um, we can see what it looks like with the hair but I think the hairline is pretty much done at this point. So um, I'm gonna clean up the mouth next, but I'm stuck in this kind of cube here, the setup, and so gotta be careful where I move. Um, okay, here's that. And let me bring over her hair piece too, so you guys can kind of see how that brown ended up, as well as her little pants. Oh, okay, that was all so close. So here's her hair, which I will drop. Here is her pants, and here is her little other hair. Okay, we're good. All right, safe. So yeah, I think the hair uh, gradient ended up really pretty. It's very, like it's pretty subtle, um, but it's very chocolate brown. So nice dark brown. You can see the gradient's really dark here, it gets really light here, and then dark again. Yeah, I think it's really pretty. When it's in her head, it looks pretty nice, so we can actually put it in now. There we go. So, there will be some adjusting and such, but I think it's supposed to be like up here. We'll figure it out. And I don't even know if this is the right one. Let me see. Oh no, this isn't even the right side. <laughs> Let me turn it around. Here we go. So that's what it will look like when it's on her. You can see the gradient right here, pretty nice as it turns. And again, this is all glossy right now, but it, it won't be when we, uh, you know, put the matte coat on. It'll be a lot flatter than that. Um, and then the pants in comparison to the There we go. Pants in comparison to the hair. Also really nice uh, clear difference between the browns and the oranges here. So this is still, I wouldn't say this is orange. This is still pretty brown. It's more of like a leather brown, um, whereas this is more of a reddish chocolate brown. So um, still like, I really like how these shadings came out. This was totally me like free 
handing things and leaving it up to fate. So um, this has been really fun. And I'll put these over here because I don't want them to get damaged or scratched. I'll put them away later. Um, is everything going to be matte or will I leave some parts gloss? Um, most of this kit will be matte, so her hair, face, uh, you know, all the skin. Her pants will probably be semi-gloss. We'll see. They're either going to be matte or gloss, or matte or semi-gloss. Um, same with her boots and the white accessories, but the blue is going to stay glossy. So that will be a really harsh blue metallic um, as well as the gold details as well so remain metallic so she'll have a nice contrast of a super shiny outfit with her not so shiny everything else yeah I think it will be really fun I don't usually leave a lot of parts glossy I tend to make a lot of my kits matte and so this will be interesting um, also something I've been wanting to do for a while okay so let's put this on real quick and just take a look at the hairline. I'm just kind of gonna hold this gently and lift it up. Oops, come on camera. And there we go. She looks so pale in this uh, lighting, but she's really not. I don't know what's going on with the camera. Pretty cute though. I really like how the hair turned out too. There's a really nice shading gradient like happening with that hair. And I feel like I didn't even do that much, but this kit has a lot of detail packed into a tiny package, so good times. All right, so let's do um, her mouth real quick. It really shouldn't take that long. And then we're going to mix some white paint up and put it in her eyes. Looks like a little bit of this wiped off, though, so let's get and also. Okay, what's going to happen here is my palette here is getting a little bit dirty so I'm gonna wipe this off and add some clean thinner brush because otherwise it's going to mix in with that pink okay and let's wipe up some more of this don't need too much basically just notice the bottom of her mouth um, is kind of missing some paint so I'm going to fill that in that for now and see you might need to wipe it all out and reapply it but it should be okay okay so mouth is actually pretty straightforward because it is sculpted so really the main thing you want to make sure is that there's no um, pink on the outside of her lips because that's kind of weird and then I'm gonna go in on the inside and clean out some of this pink that I over applied that way I will be able to apply a second layer and cover everything up really interesting mouth of hard to get good lighting here too. Let me see if I can. It's about as good as I'm gonna get here. I'm working kind of on the edge of my table. Oh, that helped though. I don't know how that changed the camera, but I can see the inside of her mouth a lot more. The sculpted mouth is casting shadows basically, so.
thin out a little bit. I'm just gonna apply a second layer here. So while that is happening, I can start working with the white. Spotting is happening here. Okay, so let's start getting the white ready. Pretty straightforward. All I will be literally mixing and using is uh, Guy has enamel white. So this is gonna be straight out of the bottle white that I'm just gonna thin and put into the whites of her eyes. So let's see. Oops. Make sure that it's dry. So the white comes out kind of stringy, but you can still thin it. I'm gonna try not to thin it too much because white tends to run and on sculpted eyes that can be an issue because it's gonna kind of try to pool into the corners of her eyes but we'll just have to see. Also, there's a lot of tiny bubbles, as you can see. And you don't want those to be on your uh, figure. <sighs> so what I tend to do is kind of blow them out or use my breath <sighs> to blow out some of them. You can also kind of poke at them once you're applying it. Okay, let's see. We're just kind of gonna try to see if the consistency is right here. Okay, and let me make sure that my uh, <laughs> hands are clean. The problem is like I'm touching the head and so I also have white on my finger and so I don't want my hair to go white. Yeah, white it can be very tricky to work with. Just kind of is. Same with yellow. I have problems with yellow a lot. So you can see it's pretty thinned out. It's just kind of like pooling into the uh, corners of her eyes here. I may have thinned this out a little bit too much. I'll just have to see. But the good thing is you can always apply a second layer. Yeah, this is pretty thin. I'm actually gonna wipe this up right now and add some more white because that's gonna be problematic later. Okay. So let me add a little bit more white to this mixture before I put it on her uh, eyeball. And I'll need to look at this kit again. I'm actually not sure how much of her eyes are filled in with like the actual eye, not just the sclera. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I'll we'll have to do that another time. I'm also not 100% sure how um, I want to paint her eye yet in terms of like what I want the pupil to look like, the iris, etc. Okay, that's also not great. It's like a little hair. That's better. Not too worried if I get a little bit on her eyelid right now, because that can all be wiped off. Really, I'm just trying to make sure all those tiny bubbles are all popped out when you lay it down. This is a much thicker coat. Okay. 
these tiny bubbles do tend to show up in your final coat. They look like little like imperfections, and so it's uh, important to try to get rid of them. There will be a handful of paint to get rid of here. Yeah, it kind of goes outside the line of her eye. See, even with the thicker coat on that right eye over here, it's starting it's still cooling a little bit. So, what I'll probably do is just wait for this layer to dry, clean up the exterior, just like the outside, and then maybe apply another layer. But we'll just have to wait at this point. and I'm going to pour a little bit more clean thinner. So, this is just really concentrated white. And so too. Can also be helpful as if the paint is kind of cooling a certain way is to keep the head level. So, because it's facing down, the paint is kind of gravitating towards the bottom there so I tend to kind of hold the head up when I'm painting um, eye sockets and stuff and so that way the paint will kind of shift it where it's supposed to although here it's like obviously outside of the eye socket so we're gonna have to clean that up regardless but that's fine my eyes usually look like this after one layer so But yeah, what I was getting at before, and before I think I went off on some other tangent, um, is that some people these days don't paint the whites of the eyes first. Um, they paint an outline of the eye. And so a technique that I've seen that's kind of gaining traction is to paint the outline of the whole eye and, and everything, My, mainly the rough you know, eyelid and or the eyeliner, the out, eye outline, etc., in kind of an orangish color and then use that as the template for everything. And so after you put down that orangish layer and seal it with your top coat, you will um, put on your darker eyelid layer. So a lot of times, you know, anime eyes are darker toned. They've got kind of black eyelashes or dark brown eyelashes. Um, so you'll put that layer on top of the orange one and then you can kind of um, blend the two together in a way that makes it look more smooth and then go from there and do everything else. Whoa, that's weird. Why did my audio shut off? I just like heard the music cut off. Let's get the head. Yeah, so then you'll do that and then I don't know where they, they factor in the whites of the eyes. It just kind of like happens. I don't know if they erase the um, eye with lacquer paint. That seems like something that could happen. Just erase the skin tone under so you end up with the white eye. So that would really only work with um, resin, like really white resin, which I have done to some extent. I've erased stuff like that, um, but just interesting, different techniques. There's many ways to paint eyes, many ways to paint pretty much everything in a kit. So don't be afraid to explore. I'm gonna clean up her mouth now while her eyes are kind of like settling.
So just cleaning up that kind of teardrop shape. Making sure all of the mouth color is, you know, constrained within the mouth and not outside on her lips. Here or what? There's something little right here. Little hairs will be the kind of bane of your existence here because they do like to attach to this white paint. So, you gotta try to get them out as soon as you can. to not like a certain area so what I'm just gonna do and I notice it pooling I'm gonna wipe out some of this and just reapply it this happens to me quite often it's the beauty of enamel you can really just wipe out clean out what you don't like I think in all the handling of the uh, hair at some point I touched the mouth since it's not locked in, you end up um, rubbing paint off, etc. I don't have to rub off all of it, but I'm going to take out most of this. Let me thin a little bit more of this. This time I'll go bigger so I have enough to work with. And I don't want it too thin because again it's a this mouth is sculpted in a way where it's raised like her tongue is raised up and so if your paint's too thin it's just gonna fall to the sides of the mouth okay that's pretty thick should be okay all right so i'm gonna do this and then i'll take a look at the eyes that second layer okay so I'll, I'll lay that layer down first and then maybe a second one once this one's had a time to dry for now I'm just gonna start kind of working at her eyes see if this is cleaned up or dried yet probably not fully but I'm just gonna slowly wipe this white off and make it so the only white is in her eye socket. 
any that is on her eyelid, I will also wipe off. Oh, it's still kind of wet though. Mm. Yeah, this paint isn't fully dry yet, so I am just gonna have to wait here. The one thing about this enamel too, I keep saying the one thing, but there's many things. But another thing about enamel is that you really just want to wait till it dries. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time doing the wipe off method because it's going to take off a bunch of stuff and move things around, etc. So there's unfortunately some downtime that has to happen. So usually what I'll do is I'll, you know, put down a layer and then go get something to drink play some phone game, etc., and then come back and do it from there. This one is pretty wet. I'm gonna have to like hold the face like this seems to be the only way that the pink isn't pooling um can you blast with a hair dryer or something to speed up the drying yeah i guess but this is delicate work so the last thing i want to do is just heat up the whole piece with a hair dryer that's like most people if they're gonna want it to dry quicker they set it under a heat lamp or a drying rack so like those giant dishwasher racks uh, but I don't have access to those and so I and I really don't like <laughs> I'm not doing this for the speed I'm doing this because I enjoy the hobby so I don't even mind like coming back and doing stuff later but for our purposes here like that's not going to help because you know there's stuff we want to show and it actually does look like we are running low on time because it's almost 10 let me hold this like this real quick and so i think what's gonna have to happen uh because i have stuff to do still um is we're gonna have to end this pretty shortly and then on today is what friday yeah tuesday so next tuesday um we will continue this but i will have the whites of the eyes painted at that point and so you know, really there's not too much more. Like everything that I showed you guys with the hairline is what I do with the eyes as well. We're just filling, fitting the white to the, the sculpt. Um, but on Tuesday, we will work with the next layer, which will be painting her eyelids and maybe her eyebrows. I haven't fully decided yet. Usually I paint eyelids, eyebrows, um, and the eye kind of crease all at the same time. And... So uh, we'll do all of that as much as we can on Tuesday. And that will also give me a chance to, you know, make sure that everything is all settled. Yeah, no problem. We'll play it by ear because eye painting takes a while. Tuesdays are, again, not great for me. They're actually really difficult. So um, I'm in the process of figuring it out. But if we don't finish... Well, we'll have to figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out on Tuesday. Yeah, I think that sounds good. So yeah, thank you for tuning into the stream tonight. Um, looking at details, here's kind of where we're at. Just, and what is happening here? Oh, that. Um, we're just working on faces, figuring out details. You can see your eyes are still pretty rough, but they will be cleaned up soon. But man, that hair is looking great. That shading's great. The hairline is all cleaned up. And so far, so good. So, thank you for guys for watching. Next stream will be on next Tuesday. Uh, that will be the 7th. So, Tuesday, so, wow, we're in September. Tuesday, September 7th. All right, thank you for tuning in. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.